Hi, um, thanks for coming out to the Lightning Talk. My name is Marcus Yano. I'm the uh, Executive Director of Solutions Architecture and Data Center and Cloud Service Delivery for CBTS Hawaiian Telecom. So today, real quick, we're gonna talk about how disaster recovery has changed. Um, really, it's gonna be real fast. It used to be that disaster recovery was focused on data centers or about equipment. That how did you have a hot site or a warm site or a cold site, and how do we fail over and protect the equipment? Do we have that ability to do it? But when we think about it, it's not about the equipment or the data centers or the locations. It's about the ability to deliver a service or an application for the business to continue operating, right? So when we think about it, you have to start with inventorying everything. You have to know what systems you have, what applications you have, and where the data resides. That's really what disaster recovery has come down to. It's now more about IT resiliency. I was on a panel just a little bit ago where uh, I was introduced to a new uh, concept, which I really like, around IT fragility. And it's the ability to not be resilient, right? Resilience means that you can resist change and go back to your normal. So if there was some type of disruption, you can have that and then continue on. Fragility is really where disaster recovery is coming back of not only being able to resist that and continue doing what you're doing, but get better at it, to learn from it, to improvise, to go above and beyond. So to do that, you have to understand the workflow. You have to understand, I've worked with customers that say, I need to protect this application or protect this data. And then they have an event or a disaster. They bring it up on the other side, but they didn't realize that all of these subsidiary or dependent systems or applications were required to actually do any work. So they spent all this money and time and effort to, to stand up their applications in somewhere else, and then they still couldn't work. When we talk about um, keeping the data in, in two locations, right? The old adage in DR or backup was that three, two, one rule. I think most of you probably have heard of that. You wanna have three copies of your data and at least two different medias in two locations, one offsite, okay? So easy to remember that three, two, one rule. If you Google it, you'll find it. There's lots of people out there talking about it. The second part is don't leave it up to chance. There's a lot of people I've worked with in the industry where they say, okay, we have a DR plan. They take that, they put it on the shelf. Five years later, someone says, hey, do we have a DR plan? They say yes, they take it off the shelf, they dust it and they look at it. And most of the systems, somewhere in the neighborhood of 80 to 85% of those systems have changed significantly that that DR plan would not be executable in its current form. So having a, a plan is just the baseline, but don't leave it up to chance. We want to be able to test that plan, right? I'll talk about the automation portion of it. But we want to test everything. So have that plan, test it. Well, the biggest pushback I get from people is, well, I can't fail over my entire system. I can't test this. It's too costly or I can't affect or risk affecting the business. That's where we show them how to do things with automation. The more that you can automate, the less chance there is to fat finger something, type in the wrong code and take down the entire network, right? We've seen that happen in, in our own world of where they've taken down the entire core because somebody mistyped something, right? So we automate most of what we can. If you can process and diagram it out, you can probably write an algorithm to automate it. Um, make sure you're engaging the business. It's, DR is no longer about IT. It's a business function. It's not an IT function, it's a business function because really it comes down to the money and the business cares about the money. The last part is find trusted partners. A lot of resources are out there uh, that specialize in things like disaster recovery, that specialize in business continuity, IT resiliency, whatever you wanna call it, right? There are partners that are out there. But I'd also engage, say to engage your peers in your verticals to understand the things that they're doing, the challenges that they might have, how they're addressing that, the things that they haven't found a way to address. Have those conversations, right? It's one of those things that we don't talk about disaster recovery, we just all assume that we've got it covered or we've done our, our test, our tabletop exercises, and we feel pretty good about it. But we're not really looking at where it's moving or why or things of, of different ways to do uh, what we think we already can do today. I talk about experience matters. In, when we run into spaces with verticals, finance is not just finance. There are different sub-verticals within finance. Healthcare is different than hospitality. Telecommunications is different than IT although we're seeing that converge, right? And so having that experience in those spaces, it matters, right? 
um, a Fortune 20 company is going to have a very different need than your small local shop that has five people. So having that plethora of experience will, will depend on who you partner with. Um, decide on whether you want to have a, a narrow focus or a broad focus. And what this really means is, do you have a, you know, a one throat to choke type of approach where I want one single vendor that I know that handles it from soup to nuts, right? From start to finish, does everything for me. They help me validate my plan, help me write it, help me implement the plan, and then help me test the plan, and then reiterate, repeat, rinse and repeat, right? Or do I want to pick and choose different vendors that have specific needs or use cases within that space? And, and quite honestly, we, we've done both sides, right? On our side, we see customers that only want to deal with us because it's one bill, uh, we have uh, intimate knowledge of their processes and their business from start to finish. We've also seen where they want certain capabilities that maybe is not in our wheelhouse. And we'll tell them, hey, you should probably engage with this other partner that we can bring in to do some of those things, right? Um, less is more, you know, we'll talk about, you know, I kind of talked about that. Interoperability, we, we talk a lot about that, of being able to understand how everything works in your environment. Uh, and then, you know, the last portion again, is, is really about DR testing and, and plan review should be done as frequently as possible. Uh, when people we engage, I usually sit down with a CIO or a CFO and they ask me, well, how often should I be testing my DR plan? And I tell them at minimum once a month, right? And most people when I do that, look at me like I'm crazy. What do you mean once a month? Do you know how much effort goes into all of that? Do you know what the risk to the business is if we take a system down and every month we're touching something different? And what I tell them is that for most businesses, the rate of change that they're seeing in their environment, whether they know it or not, is significant enough that if you go more than two or three months of testing your environment, there's a good chance that if something happens, you're not going to have accounted for it, right? So that's where things about talking about automation come into play, using different tool sets, um, you know, Ansible scripting, some of those uh, skill sets that are kind of emerging, especially in the telecommunications world, right? It's not really where we are. Again, I touched on it. IT and, and telecommunications are kind of converging, and we're starting to see companies like Hawaiian Telecom change from a telecommunications company to an IT services company, right? And everybody's going to have to start looking at that. Our businesses locally are having to address those things. Um, and then, again, you know, I always hear about, oh, it's, that's so expensive, to test or to do those or use those tools. Uh, I always ask them to quantify for me what it would cost the business to go down for a day or four hours for that matter. Take a look at that and say, you know, what is that risk factor? Just like insurance, what are you willing to invest to protect or mitigate those risks for your companies? Um, and then again, it can be very time consuming, so automate where you can. Uh, and then leverage partners. If you can offload some of that workload or, or tap into other skill sets, uh, take a look at that and see what they can bring to the table. If everybody comes in and tells you that they can do everything for you, they might be able to, but understand should they be doing it all for you, right? So the partner should be a partner and not just take it over and rip it away and charge you a lot of money. They should really understand your business and what makes sense for you, okay? If you guys have any questions, our booth is right behind this lightning thing. CBTS, come check us out. Uh, a bunch of my architects are there as along with myself. So...